You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Welcome to Friday. My name is Brock. I'm Dolby. Uh, very exciting stuff. We have our uh, first bet of the NHL season as my Toronto Maple Leafs and Dolby's bandwagon Red Wings are going head to head for the first time tonight. First of all, I've been cheering for the Red Wings longer than you've been alive, young man. So let's just ease up on that. Do we name three players on the team? No, because I have been very honest that I haven't watched a lot of their games in the last two years. Because they're a dog shit team right So when they start playing good, you'll hop back on the bandwagon. No, I'm probably not coming back anytime soon. I'm on to football now. Uh, I always like to razz Dolby about his Red Wings fandom. But since it is the first time that they will be playing, I figured we could do a little bet. You bullied me into this. Yeah. And uh, basically the consequences are we're going to make it light for the first bet of the year. Mm -hmm. Is that if the Leafs win... You have to write a beautiful poem about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right. If the Red Wings win, I will do the same. And I'm so bummed out because I thought I was going to trap you. You did not specify that the poem had to be positive until the very end of the conversation. I was planning on if the Leafs had won coming in here on Monday with a a three-and-a-half-minute epic saga of the team that ain't won since 67. Then you're like, it has to be nice. I'm like, shit. It's got to be positive, all right? There can't be any subtle jabs in there, all right? Uh, All right. And I can't wait until Monday morning to hear a beautiful poem about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, we'll see how that goes. But it also assumes that I will still be alive on Monday. Because as we're about to hear, I had to tell the story this morning of me almost dying in the parking lot. The Brock and Dolby. Brock and Dolby. Podcast. The Brock and Delby Podcast. Man, honestly, like, I, I slept in way too late this morning and just <laughs> had the weirdest dreams last night. Okay, well, now now you got a dream journal for all of us here. You can't say you had a weird dream and not tell it. And we're all cool here, so no judgment on dreams, right? 100%. I don't know what any of this means, because I'm not planning on going to any concerts, but I had a dream mm. that me and my buddy... We're at a concert, Mm -hmm. okay? It's in an arena-type venue. Sure. For some reason, I'm in a seat. He's in the crowd. You know, because you're broke. People kept saying, yeah, that's true. (laughs) People kept saying the Glorious Sons were going to be playing, so we're, like, waiting, and then it's random bands that I've never heard that are just performing. It's probably bands from real or fake that are just stuck in your subconscious. Maybe. (laughs) There's like a band that comes out that has 17 dudes. They're all in fluorescent like green. Oh, the Arcade Fire. Uh, (laughs) No, we thought they were a ska band, but nobody was actually singing. Uh, It was very weird. And my buddy all of a sudden is beside me in the dream and he's like, let's get out of here, man. That was the deal breaker. And I was like, all right. And uh, we both don't have shirts on for Mm. some reason. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. We're walking like out of the venue, and he mm. goes, "Sometimes I work here. It's crazy how small the stage was, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it was very small." It's and a tiny he's like, stage. "I'll show you the floor plan." And we go in this like back room office of the <laughs> arena. Okay. And it kind of looks like my dad's office from when he worked at the college there doing like maintenance. What is that? Twenty years ago? Yeah. <laughs> and there's like two guys in like work polos, like kind of sitting there. Hanging out, doing nothing, as guys in work polos will do. And my buddy goes, Hey, I want to show him the floor plans of the concert and how small it is. And the guy goes, Oh yeah, one second. And they're like looking around and they're like, Well, we can't seem to find the floor plans. And there's another guy that's there, and he's like, maybe it's in this box right here. Okay. And this guy stands up and bends over to pick up the box, and he's wearing Daisy Dukes. <laughs> and then I woke up. <laughs> and then I just woke up. So this man sitting in his office during a concert full of bands you've never heard of before and maybe the Glorious Sons stands up, turns around, flashes hams at you while the, he's rocking Daisy Dukes the, and a polo shirt. The hairiest and flattest ass <laughs> that you've ever seen in your entire life. It's Hank Hill. Yeah. Hank Hill from King of the Hill. And my like my <laughs> camera in my dream like zoomed in on it and I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then I just woke up and I sat in bed for like 15 minutes and I was like, why? That was the end of the dream. Yeah. His, his ass was so bad 
dad in those shorts, your body was like, wake up, abort, emergency alert. I was just like, you know, people always say your dreams have meanings. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know. Like, you can buy, like, dream journals and stuff like that that, that'll help you decode what your dream is about. I don't know that that's been published yet that'll explain that one. I don't want to write it down. I regret saying it out loud right now. Well, Dan is curious, 762 asking if you smoked two joints before bed last night. Something crazy here, guys. I've been off the jazz cabbage for two weeks. Oh, that's right, too. So I don't know. They say it makes your dreams a little like more clear or crazy. I don't know. This is your brain yeah. explaining to you as bluntly as it can. It's time to come back home. <laughs> Two weeks is long enough. <laughs> I don't know if there was something triggering that happened in my dad's <laughs> office when I was a kid that I saw, but... Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> as we move on here... The Brock and Dobby Podcast. I'm lucky to be alive this morning, and you will not convince me otherwise. Did you see the serial killer outside the building this morning? Mm, no, I didn't see anyone outside see, when I pulled up. that's because you park from... The, I'm pointing, we're on the radio. You park over there. I park over there. You can't see where I can see from where I park. I got out of my car this morning, yeah. and I looked over and saw a man in another lot staring directly at me. Wearing a full-on Captain Highliner slicker with the hood up. Why are we just talking about this now? I Because I wanted to talk about it on the radio, and we had to talk about your weird dream first. So you had like an I know what you did last summer type scenario That's this morning? From. That's what I'm thinking about. I was trying to figure out what movie I, this it felt like I was going to get stabbed. So like yellow slicker kind of thing? Yeah, well, I mean, I couldn't tell that it was yellow, to be fair. Because he's standing fully in the dark. It's just the silhouette of the New York Islanders logo staring at me from the next lot over. And there's no reason he's standing behind a building. He's standing in between two buildings. Yeah. He could be facing either one of them, but he's standing at like a 71 degree angle facing directly to where I parked my car, not moving, just staring. Did you hit someone with your car this time last year? I did not. I have not I, I have not purposefully or accidentally murdered anyone that I'm aware of. You did not happen to drag a body with your teenage friends into the lake? Brother, if I have teenage friends, they're going to call the authorities. I'm a 41-year-old man. <laughs> The thing is, is like, there's no reason for a man to be wearing that. Halloween is over. We are not on the water. <laughs> like, what is he doing? That's terrifying, yeah. He, if you wear that out of the house, even with the best of intentions, you are scaring people. That's like seeing someone wear a trench coat at this time of the morning. There is, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. In the year of our Lord 2024, there's no reason to wear a trench coat. Uh, I, you cannot... Feel free to change my mind. When is it ever appropriate to wear a trench coat? You just anymore? always look mischievous or creepy in that thing. I think you could rank those as like somewhere in a top five of creepiest outfits of all time. You know what needs to go on there? Mm. Anybody that's wearing an apron, bonus creepy points if it's made of leather, away from a barbecue or a kitchen. Like, if you're just wearing an apron of some sort. Or specifically if it's got blood on it, yeah. 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 If you're not near a place where you need to be cooking or handling food and you're still wearing an apron, I assume that you are on your way to or from a murder scene. That's like, I mean, I don't trust anyone that wears like a balaclava unless you're at a ski hill. <laughs> Like, there's really, you know, like, there's no reason to be wearing one of those. Or, like, what are those things the kids wear? The, the shiesty or whatever they call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a mutual friend, and I'm not looking to name drop anybody, that wears a balaclava recreationally, like, just as a toque. Yeah. And even knowing him and being like, this is someone that I'm cool with. You look like you're up to no good. Creeps me out every time. I'm like, I can't be an accessory to whatever it is that you're about to do. Although, realistically, the scariest outfit you can see somebody in in the middle of the night mm. is their birthday suit. <laughs> like, if you see someone out in the buck, bad news is coming. Either it's not from them or maybe they escaped from somewhere. You're like, right. There are very few people on the planet at any given time that it is a good thing to see them naked at night. They just escaped from a man's house who's wearing Daisy Dukes and it's... <laughs> it all ties back together, brother. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Finally... Justice in the world. I found out yesterday that there are 12 different states in America that have school boards 
that have banned Crocs. Why? From schools. Why? Uh, it is generally marked as a safety concern. How? With children tripping and getting hurt because they're wearing Crocs. Some schools just say... You can't wear open-toed shoes at all. Uh, they're not the technically they're not open-toed shoes. That's too many holes. It's and got, it's got too many holes in the front. Safety concern. They're also non-slip shoes. Well, that's what they'd have you believe, but they're pretty easy if you're a kid to slip out of because most kids don't put down the little the little back hatch there. Oh, they're not going four by four. They're not going four by four. So it's led to an increase in injuries. Some schools have gone so far as to there is a uh, Jonesboro High School in Georgia that added a ban of Crocs last year in school suspension for any student caught violating the dress code by wearing Crocs. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, even schools in Florida, and Florida lets a lot of things slide, have specifically the words no Crocs allowed in the dress code. I would have assumed in Florida that that's like a mandatory footwear. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually you're not allowed laces. Yeah, laces are dangerous. Crocs are fine. You think? I, I I just feel like this is very easy to figure out. They just need to do mandatory all wheel drive checks when the kids come to school. I did think it was funny. One of them, it's actually it's the Florida school it says all shoes must have a strap or back at the heel, and I was like, well, Crocs have that, which is why they added the additional rule of but no Crocs, period. And I think if it takes. A few dozen children getting hurt for us to finally ban these eyesores from public consumption. I'm all for it. I think the biggest shock to me is that in Florida they have they have gun laws there, right? Like everyone's allowed to open carry. How are these people not staying strapped up? <laughs> Like, it's something that their parents probably do. They should know better than this. The Second Amendment does not mention it's about bare arms, not about bare ankles. That's the problem. The Brock and Dobby Podcast. You think you know people. A surprising, dare I say shocking, amount of outrage on the text line this morning from people finding out that there are 12 states in the United States with school boards that have banned Crocs using their dress code policy. The thing that really cheeses me about this whole uh, banning Crocs things at school is the fact that Heelys got banned when I was a kid because they were unsafe. <laughs> Heelys were probably a lot more dangerous than Crocs. Way more dangerous than Crocs <laughs> ever were. You had kids wheeling around on the tile, tripping up, just, eating it all over the place. Just anytime you see someone, and you don't see Heelys a lot anymore, but anytime you see someone in Heelys and they're headed towards stairs, you're just like... I might be seeing someone's final moment. You're going to be in your feelies real quick. <laughs> what was uh, what was something that was banned at your school? Dude, pogs got banned from my school because of fighting. Oh, yeah. People would fight. I remember so this is when I was in Hay River. It was about the era that pogs were really big. Yeah. And there were a couple kids whose dads worked together in a welding shop, and they made them their own, like, Basically giant hunks of brass. Oh, so they were cheating the game. To use as slammers. Yeah. And it just started causing all these like, and when I say brawls, I mean brawls over pogs in the school to the point where the principal had to come on the uh, the intercom, the PA or whatever. Yeah. And, and essentially it was just like, pogs are done. I feel like all the big trendy kind of stuff got banned at schools, like Pokemon cards because kids were fighting over that. Yeah. Uh, I got rinsed when Yu-Gi-Oh cards came out. My mom <laughs> bought me a pack. And I, I still to this day, I don't remember what it was, but some kid was like, oh, that's a bad card. You don't want that. And I traded him it. Mm. And everyone was like, oh. Oh, you got scammed, and he wouldn't give me my card back, and I was like, I'm done with this card stuff. I'm out. That got banned, uh, and then mini sticks was I, a big one. I was just going to ask. Mini sticks, I feel like, either official or unofficial, is banned in almost every school. Yeah. Because all it takes is one kid to get dented into a locker in a hallway. Well, not even it. that. Think about the fact that you got like a bunch of seven, eight, nine year olds running around with like little <laughs> weapons, <laughs> slashing each other out on the playground and whatnot. I have to imagine that's a nerve wracking feeling for the teacher to look out and see like a dozen kids all holding little handheld weaponry and just going like, 
Maybe I don't give detention today. You know, maybe maybe I let it slide a little today. Few people texting in about those clackers. Is that the the thing that was like the ball on a string like kind of thing? Clackers. I think clackers was the plastic things that like you would shake them back and forth and the balls would hit each other on both ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be terrifying to see. That's like having a little street gang of <laughs> like kids with nunchucks basically out at recess. What's that movie? The, the Outsiders or the Warriors where they're walking around? Clanking the bottles together. Come out and play, Mrs. Watson. <laughs> the Brock and Dobby Podcast. You got friend of the show Jess on the phone. What was banned at your school? Ah, uh, those tearaway pants, man. That Adidas brought out with the buttons all the way down the sides of the legs. I uh, yeah, those were a bad idea, man. I had a pair. And I, yeah, I I got them ripped off at least once while I was standing in my locker. Oh, man, they would just come right up to you out of freaking nowhere and just <laughs> grab those buttons and rip them while wide open. And you know what? I saw them at the store the other day. They're making them available. They're bringing them back. Kids have no idea how much they're about to get pants yeah. again, man. I used to know a guy who'd wear, like, two or three pairs of those things just to challenge people. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, the good old days, eh? Absolutely, the good old days, you betcha. Oh, thanks for chatting with us. No problem, guys. Take it easy. I just love the idea of ripping off tearaway pants the same way you pull a Kleenex out of the box. Like, they just keep coming. Like, He's like a magician, basically. <laughs> yeah. The good thing about tearaway pants, I will say, is they really did encourage a younger Dolby that, like, maybe you should wear underwear every day. <laughs> It's crazy the amount of just clothing that got banned at school. I mean, some people texting in just saying, like, wearing all black was banned, mm. the whole goth phase. Uh, yeah. Wrestling shirts was a huge one, the suck it shirt. Wrestling shirts in my school got, it wasn't long for the band, but they did, it was about the time Stone Cold was a thing, and kids started wearing the, like, smoking skull t-shirts and coming in and just giving everybody the finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our teachers and principal were like, well, if we ban the shirts... That'll make them stop. Yeah, and then they just all came in in other T-shirts and gave the finger. It's like <laughs> it didn't stop anything. My favorite was in the seventh grade. They banned uh, bandanas from our school. Bandanas. Because one day I showed up and my buddy Gazola, he had a bandana in his back pocket, mm. and like all of us were like, "That's sick." <laughs> Was he in a gang? So we all went to like the dollar store and all got bandanas. <laughs> and then the next day we're all walking around and not like color coded or anything. It was all random. No, you just buy your favorite color or whatever looked cool. And then I remember like one by one getting pulled into the office and the principal's like, what gang are you a part of? <laughs> Like, we're like five white kids from Milton, Ontario. Dollar Tree for life, y'all. <laughs> it was bandanas, and then I remember in, like, the fifth grade, mm. spiked belts got banned at school. I feel like anything with spikes on it, you kind of had to expect that <laughs> schools were going to be uncomfortable. I couldn't it. even imagine wearing a spiked belt right now. Like, with a gut, you got all the tread marks <laughs> in there. That's the problem. As soon as I started growing over the belt line, I didn't want anything pokey on there anymore. <laughs> This, this is the Brock and Delby podcast. We continue to get more news about AI and it freaks me out. The future is coming whether you like it or not, man. I was reading an article last night that there's a company that has apparently made it possible mm -hmm. for AI to understand and have a sense of smell. To smell? Yeah, they're saying that it could be used for good as, you know, it could be a huge technology technology uh, innovation for things like smoke detectors. Sure. We or could stop sending canaries into coal mines. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> or even just a huge development for media. I mean, I know there's like those 4D movies where like, you know, you get oh, the whiffs of stuff, but they're saying yeah. you could watch movie or TV now. Interesting. Then you could actually get the smell of like if they're cooking food or whatever, which I sure. will say, <laughs> I don't like that idea because like live streaming is a huge thing right now. Right. Live streams are going to get real personal. Honestly, <laughs> I imagine you're you're watching some guy play like the latest Call of Duty or whatever. For whatever reason, you're watching. You just, oh, he hasn't showered in so the long. The chat just lights up. Have a shower, buddy. <laughs> get some soap, bro. Dude, OnlyFans is going to be wild. <laughs> to be able to say there's already people buying bath water what else are we selling now that we can 
Digitize. Some people might enjoy that more, actually. Digitizing you know? sense. Now, the craziest thing about this mm. is they say that it will be possible to send sense like messages using AI to recreate an aroma of something. Like the way you would send a text, a voice note, a video, an emoji. Now you could send a smell. You could airdrop your buddy a fart, basically. <laughs> Is what it is. All right. I'm ready for the future to not be a thing. <laughs> You've Every day on this show, I'm like trying to convince you of the good of the future, technology, AI, all this stuff. As soon as you say the phrase airdrop a fart, I'm out. Blow up the matrix, cloud over the skies. Let's just quit. And the real problem is, is this is going to be another thing that's going to create the robot uprising because nobody's going to take accountability for their toots from now on. They're just going to be blaming the robot. (laughs) What are you talking about? I got this from your phone number. You sent me this fart. I'm just saying the real (laughs) farts are going to get blamed on the robots. They're going to get upset. (laughs) And that's when they take over. And that's when they turn on us. (laughs) The Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Earlier this week, my dog Murphy had to go in for surgery. She had uh, a tumor there. They're suspecting that she actually had breast cancer. It's crazy. So uh, they had to take one of her nipples off and then the tumor underneath out. So she's uh, healing up. Doing okay now, yeah? She's doing okay. She's all stitched up now. So we got to really be careful with her at home. Mm -hmm. And... uh, I was trying not to put the cone of shame on her oh, no. past she, couple days. She started licking? She started licking oh, yesterday. Murphy. So we had to put the cone on her. <laughs> and if you have a dog, you know as soon as you put that thing on them, they get so depressed. The cone is very funny until it's on your dog. That's the thing. Like When you see someone else's pet with the cone, you might go like, aw. But you're probably laughing. And as soon as it's in your own home, you're like... This is the saddest thing I've ever. Her whole mood just changed. She just sat on the couch and just like looked at the ground, and I was like, "Oh, baby girl!" And then the worst part is, is like it's right by the window there. Yeah. So she was sitting, and then there were like dogs walking in front of the house. Oh no! And I always like to think that other dogs probably make fun of them. Right. Yeah. The dogs are walking by, little pack. Right. One of them notices, barks to the other ones, like, "Look at that loser with the cone on." You can't even lick your own privates anymore. (laughs) What a loser! Can't even. if butts in that thing. And then me and Courtney were joking last night. And we were trying to figure out what is the human equivalent of the cone of shame. Is it a is it a face tattoo? <laughs> I mean, you do that to yourself. I mean, a lot of people take those as cool these That's, days, oh, right? No, you know what it is. What's that? It's an ankle monitor bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on like probation or something. True, like true. Like you can try and cover it up, but at some point, I'm gonna ask if you want to come outside. You're gonna be like, I can't. I mean, I guess it's the same thing like the cone. Like, yeah. why can't you come out and play? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. For reasons. Why are you stuck in the house? Uh, it's either the ankle monitor or it's the blow box in the car. <laughs> Have you ever seen anyone confidently go <laughs> in mid conversation? You jump into their car, and they're just like, oh, hang on one second here. <laughs> you want to see something cool real quick? <laughs> oh my God, that's so stylish. The Brock and Dobby podcast. Stain on your shirt is another one, especially when you don't realize it. I actually think it's worse when you do realize it, but like you're at work or so, you can't. Because now, like the cone, you know the shame. Yeah, you're just a mustard tiger. You know why everyone's looking at you, and you're like, I can't, I don't have another shirt. Someone said an Ottawa Senators jersey. Oh, you're skipping over the person who texted in Leafs jersey. Yeah, that's That's not real, though. (laughs) That's pride. (laughs) That's a cone of shame for sure. The hemorrhoid pillow is real, though. I worked with a guy who came in, and, and to his credit, he did not carry his hemorrhoid pillow around like it was a shameful thing. But like when I see a dog with a cone, my first instinct every day at work was, oh, buddy. (laughs) I do like the text that we got in here from Shannon at 762-555. She says, I really wish I could just wear a cone of of shame to stop eating sometimes. (laughs) If I could put on, you know, you have dinner. 
maybe dessert, let it digest for a bit, and then cone up for the rest of the night so you stay out of the pantry. If you could put, like, a timer lock on it before right. you go to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it releases right at bedtime, and, 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 and only if I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> I can't have it release while I'm in the kitchen, because I'll do it. You know what? The cone of shame would actually be a great fantasy football punishment, too. Oh, that would be good. You make your buddy have to wear that for, like, a month or a week, right. whatever it is. To the, to the season opener. First Monday night football football of the next season. Yeah. He has to come with you to the bar, but he has to wear the cone of shame. Oh, dude, even, you know what would be great? If bars started when they cut off people. <laughs> Just give them the cone of shame. You, you had enough, pal. I think you got to give them a chance. I think the first you go, hey, I think you've had enough. We're not serving you anymore. And if they try and sneak drinks off other tables, that's when you go, all right, you did this to yourself and you cone them. Everybody knows until you leave the bar, it comes off. <laughs> Although... Don't you think that at some point they're still going to try and just pour beer into the cone? True. <laughs> like, did you hear Tom almost drowned yesterday in his cone? Imagine being the Uber driver showing up to pick that guy up. <laughs> you could actually do it for the designated driver, uh, for the for the friend who always says he's going to be the designated driver. Oh, but then always ends up like, hey, what are you doing shots for? You're driving tonight. Yeah. All right, bud. This time you want to be the DD? We're coning you up. <laughs> The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Sad news this morning. As the iconic, the legendary, Ray Gun has decided to retire from breakdancing. <laughs> Are you talking about the Australian breakdancer? Yeah, yesterday she put out a statement. <laughs> Saying that she's officially <laughs> calling it quits. Oh, but after such a storied and legendary career? Here's the quote. She says, I'd still break, but I'm not going to compete anymore. <laughs> I was going to keep competing for sure, but that seems really difficult for me to do now. To approach a battle? I mean, I still dance and I still break, but that's like in my living room with my partner. <laughs> Uh, she did cite a <laughs> level of scrutiny that would exist in future competitions that hadn't in the past. Here's the thing. She's like, I'm going to keep breaking, but I'm not going to compete anymore. Sister, I got tough news for you. After scoring zero points at the Olympics, you didn't compete there either. I will say, and I've said it before, <laughs> she's probably the most well-known name in breakdancing history. Absolutely. And... She is going out on number top. If uh, on top, if you remember, she was ranked number one in the world. <laughs> so she's going out on top. Yeah, I, well, no, she's not going out on top. Had she gotten ranked number one in Australia and then not gone to the Olympics, yes, going out on top. But again, I remind you, zero points, not even one. I would like to say. Thank you, Ray Gun, for what you gave to the world. What? A huge distraction from our crappy lives during the Olympics. To be able to laugh at her and forget about what was going on in our own lives, I say thank you to Ray Gun, honestly. Okay, fair enough. If we're going to thank Ray Gun for her contributions, yeah. thank you for living the phrase dance like no one's watching, <laughs> even when literally everyone for was sure, watching. For sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you. Uh, for making us all feel better about our own dance moves, like Dolby saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for giving the rest of us who are dance impaired <laughs> some sick new moves to work into our repertoire. I can finally retire the sprinkler and bring out the kangaroo. Thank you for all the amazing Halloween costumes that people were able to come up with this year. Thank you for helping us think of something other than 80-pound spiders when we think of Australia for a change. Uh, and finally... I would like to say thank you to Ray Gunn for showing us that confidence is important <laughs> and that you really can do anything that you put your mind to, even if you're not good at it. <laughs> you can go to the Olympics. You just can't score a point. Our parents weren't wrong. You can do anything, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you should. And you prove that to us. This, this is the Brock and Delby Podcast. Ed's word of the day. Let's see what he's got. Good morning. Yeah, uh, today's word is I. Uh, uh, guile. Guile. Yep, guile. G U I L E. Guile. And it's uh, deceitfulness or cunning. Uh, I'm sure we all know someone that's grateful of that or like that. 
<laughs> anyway, that is about does it. Have a great one. Cheers her up. So let's see. Did he get the pronunciation right? Guile. Guile. You got it right. Yeah. No, I I know the word. It's uh, you hear it a lot when they talk about in TV shows and movies about like villains that are very like smart, like they're very uh, cunning and guile. And, Sly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Although, if I'm being completely honest, there are only two guiles that I care about in this whole world. Oh. One. From Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys, where he says, You got gall, you got guile. Step to me, I'm a rapify. Oh, damn, that is a bar. That's a bar. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the other guile is the, the character from Street Fighter <laughs> with the big flat blonde hair. I didn't even think of that. Sonic Boom! Guile. And one of the greatest songs of all time. Valid. You can put this song on doing literally anything, and you will have a good time. Yeah. It fits every situation. Great character to pick in a video game, but you don't want to be a Guile. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, I I don't want to be, like, super overly American soldier, and then also, I would rather not be known for being, like, a very cunning person. I think if you know anyone that's like that in your life, you could just be like, look at this Guile. (laughs) <laughs> Easy guile. Don't listen to this guile. You being a real guile right now. Can't trust this guile. <laughs> just replacing guy with guile. Yeah, yeah. Just do the South Park thing. I'm not your buddy, guile. <laughs> Sounds like you have a weird accent. That's what it is. <laughs> guile, 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 guile. Use it wherever you can, or at least pick him in Street Fighter, all right? <laughs> For more Brock and Dolby. Tune in weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by BadShop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store. With all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.